to the town of now. We're here for you. And in today's video, we're gonna show you VW. This is Golf Mark 6. I just don't know how I'm gonna start with the voice, like what should I say, you know? Oh man, I'm the good father. You know, son. Hello, good people, and welcome to the channel. I'm apologizing for my voice, but I fart it hard! I'm actually kidding, I'm a mega boring person, I don't party. Um, I've been ill last week, and my voice still hasn't recovered, but we're here for you, to show you this beautiful VW Golf Mark 6. It starts its production in 2008 and it finishes in 2012. We don't have any facelift for the Mark 6 because even though VW doesn't want to admit that, this is a facelift of the VW Mark 5. And let me show you around. In the front end, our headlights are changed now. They're a bit more sharper. You know, time changes, preference changes, style changes all the time. So instead of them old bubbly headlights that we had, which I still think they look pretty decent, now we have slightly sharper headlights. Then the grill looks a bit more like the one on the Passat CC. So again, the new era. And then if you remember the video with the Passat that was 2014, pretty much the grill is the same style. Then obviously the bumpers are a bit more sharper. The car looks a little bit more sportier than the Mark 5. They come in as two and five door hatchbacks. For today's video, we have the four door hatchback. I personally think the two door looks a little bit better. But then again, if you have a family, four doors is probably the perfect choice. Then we have the Estate, which is technically a VW Golf 5. And we have a convertible with a soft top. That's enough for them. If you open Marketplace, Auto Trader, this is the people's car. You can find any shape basically that you like. The most common ones are obviously the two door hatchback and the four door hatchback. Plenty of them, plenty of choice, plenty of mixture between engine, suspension, gearboxes, is extra, is extra. So prices will vary as well. These are very good cars. They're slightly cheaper built than the Mark V. This is for efficiency, obviously, for you to save your money, which if you're like a fifth or sixth owner, maybe it's not as good, but if the car's well maintained, you shouldn't worry about that. Suspension, super reliable, just a normal suspension. It comes up stock on 15 inch steel wheels, or you can get them with 16, 17, 18 inch, even 19 inch alleys. It depends of the range that you're getting. For example, the high-end models like the GTI, they come with electric suspension that we can stiffen or soften depending on the style and the comfort that we want to get from it. Bear in mind, if they fail, they cost three times as more as the normal suspension. They rarely fail. They're quite reliable anyway, but I do have to throw this as well, so you keep it in mind. Smaller engines obviously are getting smaller wheels. They ride super comfortable, especially the 15 and 16 inch wheels. Uh, for example, this one is on 195 by 65 R15. It drives super soft and is very comfortable. Let's move to the back. There's one major change on the back, which you cannot see, but as we're to the back, I'm going to explain it now a little bit more. So basically, the VW Golf 6 is made to steer a little bit more, and on the back, it's got an independent suspension now, which means you can drive the car a little bit more aggressive than the previous generation. This is super nice. Again, to keep the maintenance of the rear end uh, will be a lot more easier for you than before. Straight away. One common issue with them is the rear springs. I don't know why, but for some reason they break all the time. They deteriorate and break. The whole rear end ends up deteriorating, especially in UK. Don't know why, but these they're cheap. For example, secondhand springs. You can find them in between 30 and 60 quid. Brand new are about 50 pounds each for the decent ones, so that's 100 pounds. And you can change them for literally less than half an hour if you're taking your time. Then the rear tail lights, they're a lot more changed than the previous ones. I like this one better, but when you look at the car from the center of the back end, it actually looks a little bit smaller than the previous VW, which again, it's not exactly a bad thing. One issue that's left from the previous VW is the batch here. To open the boot, if you've never owned a VW Golf, you have to press it and then obviously it goes up. And here's where the common issue on this VWs are so it basically water drips in then it stays into that channel here and they usually rust uh, which is pretty annoying because for you to replace that it might be cheaper for you to get a new boot instead 
The normal ones, they don't have any exterior trim level. They look okay, they're definitely not sporty. Then we go to the GTI where they look a lot more nice and they actually look a lot more newer as well, so they age pretty, pretty well. This one, to be fair, sometimes when I look at it and when I look at the VW Golf Mark 5 GTI, it looks a thousand times better than this one. It is what it is. For the money that you can get a VW Golf Mark 6, you cannot argue it. I still think it looks pretty, pretty decent. And after 2013, when the Golf Mark 7 comes out, things are changed completely. And I think that VW absolutely hit the bullseye with it. This one, for some reason, I don't know why, but it isn't as fancy, it isn't as popular. I feel like the people didn't like it as much as the Mark 5. And then when the Mark 7 came out, things gone back where they should be. So this is like the gap in VWs. But in any case, it's not a bad car. Other typical places that they usually rust on the wings here and just here on the bottom, the seals. Another very annoying place that they rust is just over here. Again, water gets stuck in that channel over the windscreen and it starts to rust. Pretty, pretty annoying. But these are little bits that you won't have to worry for very, very long time. Go and look one of these. Uh, you can find out and check these places. It's nothing major. Um, I wouldn't bother fixing it because they're gonna charge you crazy money to repair these. For example, a boot will cost you around 150 pounds. Not terrible. Bear in mind, if you get one with a smashed front bumper or a rear bumper or one that's scratched all over, again, front and back, the bumpers secondhand are very expensive and sometimes it's gonna be cheaper for you to actually respray them. This is a people's car, this is a city car. So expect scratches and dings and dents here and there. It is absolutely normal, especially if it was a family car, school run car. It just happens, you go shopping, uh, you hear a corner, for example, this one has marks here, crack here, crack here. Then I'll show you what I mean by when you park it. So when you're parking, if you're not careful, you hit the door into another door uh, or elsewhere, or they hit you. So you get them little dinks like this one, this one, here all, all the side of the door. These are all normal age related marks because the car's been driven and driven. These are super popular, but in England, uh, you're gonna mainly find the 1.6 DDI's, the 2 liter DDI's and, and also the 2 liter petrol engines. The smaller engines are not as popular because people buy Polos instead. The 1.2 and the 1.4 petrol engines, you can usually find them. The 1.2 and the 1.4 petrol engine, engines, they're a bit more popular in the Polos. They're not as popular in the VW. These ones you should avoid anyway, they're not great. But let me open the bonnet and then we're gonna speak a bit more about the engines, the issues that they have what you have to look for them because here is very important and here is very costly if you mess up you might end up with a pit bag but more of that in a second other way around <laughs> i always get it wrong because on the megane on the course side always on the other side for, for, for. and here is the heart and when i've mentioned about hearts the 1.2s and the 1.4s. These are the type of hearts that are gonna get a stroke any second. Let's start with the petrol engines. Then we're gonna go to these ones and then I'm gonna explain about their issues. So we're gonna start with the petrol engines and the smallest one is the 1.2 TSI 85 and 105 horsepower. This is a type of engine that you will find most likely in a VW Polo, no VW Golf, but they do put them in Golfs as well. Then we have the 1.4 naturally aspirated 80 horsepower engine and the 1.4 TSI which is a 102 horsepower but you can get in with the 160 horsepower the difference is the one of them is the turbocharged engine the other one is the supercharged engine then we have the 1.6 again naturally aspirated with 98 horsepower and 102 horsepower and we're moving to the 1.8 TSI which is 160 horsepower then from here above is the big place which is the 2 liter GTI they vary from 110 horsepower, they then jump to 235 and to 270 horsepower. And we have the American 2.5 petrol engine, which is 182 horsepower. You won't find this in England, but I mention it because I've noticed that there is quite a lot of people that watch us from America as well. So I do feel like I have to throw this as well. And then the diesel engines, there are only two. There are 1.6 TDI and a 2 liter TDI. The 1.6 has 90 horsepower, 
105 horsepower and 110 horsepower and the 2 litre TDI is the well known 140 and 170 horsepower. Few things we have to mention straight away for the diesels, the 1.6 is absolutely terrible, you can chuck it in the bin, it's no good, I hate it, I absolutely hate it, I've only had issues with that one, it might be just me, but if I have to start with the issues, there are many. For example, injectors, they're known for fail, their solenoid is failing or their mechanical spot is failing, regardless of which one is going to fail, their injectors fail like crazy and they're super expensive. 150 pounds is per injector for a third one, second hand is 150 pounds as well. I don't recommend you get in second hand one anyway, because you never know when it's going to fail. And then we have the brand new ones, they're about 450 pounds per unit. The whole car costs three grand, you don't want to spend nearly 2k on just the injectors. Then the EGRs, the EGRs are getting blocked and stuck, that's another issue with them. Turbos, they fail with turbos as well, it's just so much stuff that they fail with uh, and they're not very decent, although on the other hand they're very economical and they're all taxes only 30 quid a month, so you do have to make your mind if you get a decent example that works sweet and then you've got a receipt proven that your injectors have been done, the EGI valve is clean, um, the turbos been fixed and all of that which is highly unlikely. It's probably going to be a decent example and it's going to be worth for you to get it depending again on what price you're willing to pay. They're also slow and they're not very nippy. If you remap it then you're risking your flywheel fail as well. The 2 litre TDIs, 170 horsepower, well known, we all like it. It goes well, it's economical, it's reliable, 140 horsepower. As we know from the Mark V, it's got issues with the head gaskets, so be careful, look at the codes on the actual head, or you can look them in the logbook. From there, you can make your mind whether you want this engine or not. Again, make sure you inspect it pretty, pretty well. For the petrol ones, they have cooling issues, so basically their water pumps are plastic and they tend to leak every now and then, so you do have to replace them if you don't catch them on time. This is an engine failure. Their timing chains are worse than timing belts. It needs to be replaced every 60,000 miles for definitely because the chain is so thin. I don't even have anything to show you how thin it is, uh, but it's absolutely useless. Once it stretches, this is your engine in the bin. That is for the little petrol engines. Also, the petrol engines which, that they have turbo, they're known for having oil consumptions. So make sure you put some additive and you check it on regular basis, top it up on regular basis. Because again, if you're left out without an oil, I don't have to say it one more time, but that's your engine into the bin. Also, another common issue for the petrol engines is their injectors and their vanus systems. Yes, you heard me right, vanus. We only thought that this issue is for BMWs. Well, now this is a VW thing as well, so be careful with the vanus systems. Also, another common issue for the diesel engines is the DPF. I can't stress this enough. We say it in every single video, but I feel like I need to because we have lots of new viewers coming in all the time. So DPFs, especially with the VW, it's a city car. It's been driven mainly around the city. This is not one of them old engines where you're like careful with the RPMs. This you need to rev it, otherwise your DPF gets clogged uh, and then again massive issues from there. Take it every now and then on the motorway for 15 minutes, third or fourth gear give it a good ref, put a bit of additive just to keep this DPF clean because driving it in the city it won't let the DPF regenerate it when it clogs up you're gonna go into limp mode it's very expensive for the matter of putting in the additive that's a five or six pounds and for the matter of you spending 15 minutes of your time do them on the motorway so you can re regenerate your DPF you're gonna save yourself hours and hours waiting on the garages and big bills coming from your wallet. So as we covered all the engines now and their common issues, I'm gonna move to gearboxes. We have a five speed manual, not bad, but the gears are quite long. It doesn't feel as nippy. And then we have a six speed manual, very decent, very reliable. We have nothing to worry about it. The gears are all nicely synchronized. We're gonna talk a bit more about this when we get into the car. Then we have the well-known for failures, automatic GHG gearboxes. You do need to service them on a regular basis. Otherwise, their me mechatronic is failing and and it's about two between two and two and a half grand to fix it but the pros in that gearbox are that it shifts super smooth you can barely feel when it shifts and just before we shut the bonnets i'm gonna mention about the flywheels flywheels on these are known to fail they're dual mass flywheel and when it fails it's about 400 pounds just for the flywheel and then the labor is on top 
you can catch if a flywheel is on the way pretty pretty easy i'm gonna fire up the car in a second just to show you what to look for so when you're basically depressing and pressing the pedal if you do it very slowly you'll be able to hear a rattle if your flywheel is on its way for example here Also another way is, when you, as soon as you turn the car off, if you hear any rattles, then that means the flower is on its way, like here. So you can hear like how it rattles, like for like probably 0 0.5 seconds until it actually turns off the engine. And sometimes when the car's like just sitting idly, casually doing nothing, you know, chilling, you can hear the flywheel, if it's like super bad, then you can hear the rattle of the flywheel and once you turn off, uh, once you press the pedal, you can then feel the difference between the engine, how the engine is running and how the engine sounds. And the last thing is the bonnet latch. This fails all the time. It literally just cracks in here and when you press it, the hook doesn't want to go back, then you cannot release the engine. This is a very simple fix. If that happens to you, just release it from the main hook. You go in with a flathead screwdriver and you just push this aside. So when it's here, you just push it aside. You can even do it by finger and you can open it. Then here's what I mean by this is a pretty much a facelift of the VW Golf Mark 5. That latch, if you cannot find it, for a Golf 6, you can always get one from Mark 5. It fits perfectly. It works just as fine. This one particularly is from Mark 5 and it does the job. With all of that, we're gonna move to interior. Being inside of the car, the first thing that makes me impression is the seats are comfy. VW Golf is known for having comfy seats anyway. Even if they're just made from fabric, the seats are very, very nice and comfy. The leather ones are also comfy. The dashboard still looks a bit more like a dashboard from a VW Golf Mark 5, although there's few bits that I like into this Golf more and there's also few bits that I like better in the previous Golf, so let me explain. So you have the central column here, I think it looks nice and neat. It kind of matches with the time when the car was first started to be in production. Uh, this climate control unit here, it looks a bit more like the one on the Passat CC, so that's quite nice. The radio is a little bit boring, I personally think that, but then you, they come with sat nav, depending on which trim level you're gonna get. All these trims here, here, obviously, that trim here, they come with carbon, uh, fiber, wood, uh, and all of that, gray, silver, whichever you wanna think about it. They come with different trims. Then media, it comes with sat nav, it comes with a big display, it comes with the smallest display for the basic trim levels. For example, this one is a basic one, so you only get this little display. Obviously, you get the little boring radio. It doesn't sound bad, it actually sounds quite nice. And you also have an auxiliary lead and a CD, which not many people use uh, these day and age anyway. The one with the sat nav, it looks absolutely stunning. I really, really like it. But in general, the central column is nice and simple. You don't have many buttons to play around with. Everything's literally one hand aside. I am a bit short. I've mentioned this before, but I still find the car all right in size. For somebody that's bigger, you will probably have to move the seats. There is plenty of leg room for any people from any size. Literally, you can adjust the seats however you like. It goes up and down, backwards and forwards. One thing that I don't like is that you need to, in order for you to change your backrest, you need to spin it like back in the days when you used to do it with them old Mazda 32, with them old Mazda 323, that sort of age, like back in the 1995s, early 2000s, it used to be that way. Then they moved to levers, which you can just easily, less than a couple of seconds, move the backrest. Another thing that I do like about it is the buttons. The buttons for the lock-in, for the windows, 
and all of them on the previous generation they used to be uh, with like a rubber coverage so it used to scratch super easy these ones are literally made from plastic so they don't scratch but on the other hand that rubber feel is still left out in the handles here so they do still scratch which is an, not exactly an issue because it's easy to replace then we have the speedo that i do like the speedo better than the mark 5 the speedo lights up in white and gives you that newer ish feel one thing that i like better on the previous generation than this one is the steering wheel on the basic trim levels i don't think the steering wheel looks that nice the previous one felt a lot more comfortable first of all second of all it felt a little bit newer ish and just the actual touch was a lot more nicer because it was a leather where this one is rubber and just feels so basic like you're sitting in them first polos from the 1992s i think i had one many years ago uh, and it's just literally i'm gonna open the door because it's a bit hot in the car so as i've mentioned the sound system is quite nice depending on the trim level you can get in with electric windows um, from in the back and in the front as well this one has only electric windows on the front obviously electric wing mirrors uh, and all of that it really really depends how much money you want to spend you got leathers electric seats uh, heated ones it's just so much extra that these vws comes in but if you just want a cheap reliable car to get from point a to point b a basic trim level like this it's not bad at all it's got the ac it's got the electric windows so you don't have to go up and down uh, the ones on the back are manuals for the kids to play about with them if they break their cheek they're like a fiver then quite nice detail is once you put your indicators you've got that little indicator right on your wing mirror just telling you that your indicator is going off and on something that is very important for this car is the safety it is super super safety all in total it has nine airbags so you have an airbag here airbag here airbag in the passenger airbags in the legs curtain airbags here it is super safe so this is a massive plus especially for the price that you're looking to pay it's a massive plus we have a little pocket here which is with an ashtray and a 12 volt socket that esp button that you can turn it off and on which i don't know why you would want to do that that sticker here it usually peels off especially if the car's on quite a lot of mileage uh so just bear that in mind if you see one of these it's no problem i think ebay will cost you about five pounds to buy a new one otherwise the gears are quite nice and synchronized and they go well into every single gear if your clutch is working as a shut we have two little cup holders and usually they come with armrest this one is a very basic model so it doesn't have no an armrest but we have another cup holder here we have a little pocket where we can store some stuff basic handbrake works super nice super nice and then we have a big pocket here which is enough to fit your phone your wallet whichever you want to do and a glove box which is fair size glove box and you can also turn your air back from here another very good thing is that we have that little slot that's where we can keep our service history or other important documents and the best thing about this glove box is that it's cooled so from here when you turn your ac you can turn it off and on but from here if you put your drinks uh they're gonna be sitting nice and cool that's about it for the glove box on the side we have two big pockets uh it's big enough for a drink plus for the car some visors are not that great because the actual windscreen is quite big uh, but they do do the job and we have mirrors in them we have like interior lights here and here uh nothing really special something that i need to mention as well while we're in the front of the car the headlight switch for some reason it breaks all the time the good thing is they're only 10 pounds on ebay and another little trick is if your car hasn't got automatic headlights you can always convert it for 20 pounds so basically you get the switch for the automatic lights and that usually comes with the automatic headlight sensor which just literally it's plug and play all you have to do is just put the wire in and place it somewhere here once you place it as normal you just turn your headlights leaving on automatic mode and when it gets dark they're gonna go off by themselves with all that being said we're moving to the back inside when you first get in you need to have this once up 
There we go. Otherwise, it's not really comfortable. Once it's got plenty of leg room, especially for somebody that's my size, somebody who's even taller, like Marek Barry, it's gonna have plenty of leg and headroom for him as well. Something that I do like is that these cars come with no pockets in the seat, so nothing to stretch. Just look how nice and neat it looks like, especially when it's given a good buff because that's like a leather type of material. It looks nice and neat, it looks how it should be. If you have a central armrest on the column, you're gonna have a little pocket here. If not, you just have a little pocket drink. Very basic inside, the seats are split in 60 by 40. They're super comfortable. It's good to carry different stuff as well if you want to. And again, another two little pockets here. They are not good for anything. We've got two little speakers. Handles that work. Are you kidding me? Can you unlock? <laughs> Please. <laughs> there was a small interruption which we had to uh, sort out. Basically, the child control on this door was on. I don't know why I've not remembered doing that. We have Isofix on the rear seat. Child control, as I've mentioned, super nice for family car. And then we have that light, the interior light here on the back. So with all that being said, we've got the Isofix points here and here. And I'll show you where you can actually turn off and on your child control. You don't need any flathead screwdrivers. It's designed in a way where you can actually use your case. This is my VWK. I just put it in here, turn it right, and now when I shut the door, you won't be able to open it from the inside. You'll only be able to open it from the outside. There you go. But then the downside is that the windows, the back windows are mechanical, which means if your kids want to open them, you won't be able to shut them unless you actually physically stop the car, go to the back and roll the windows back up. With the electric windows, it's quite nice because you can usually lock the windows from uh, the driver's side and they won't be able to open them up and down. But let's hope that your kids will be sensible enough not to do that. With all that being said, shut this door, move to the boot. Boot wise, when you open it, tail lights are split in 50 by 50. If you have to use mathematics, we have the rear light here and also the fog lights. They tend to burn every now and then, but it's super easy to fix them. So basically, you put your finger here, you open that, and here are your lights. All you have to do is just literally unclip this. You have two little clips here, you don't need any tools at all. Then, once you replace them, you just put it back together. We have two handles for us to cut our boot and we have a big boot for what it is for a hatchback it's actually a massive boot i would say and we just put the camera aside so it's a fair size boot especially for a little hatchback and if you remove this tray press these two buttons when you fold the seats it's not like 100 percent flat but it gives you a fair bit of space for you literally to do whatever even camping i would say maybe if you roll the seats down as well for like a mattress, you know, Marek, we go camping. Get basket, Maria. Also, we have like a few hooks here and here and here and here, which we can use to stabilize on, stop any luggage that we have from moving in. Uh, one of them is for a baby trolley as well. Put this back. There we go. Now, if we lift this one here, you have a little hook. There we go. Got it. And we have understory space for your spare tire, which is not a full size spare tire, but it's gonna do the job. And then we have obviously our recovery tools, like a car jack, the one for to you remove your bolts. You should, if you're on a alley wheels, you should have your uh, spare locking wheel nut set here. And if you need any information about your car, you can just find it over here on that little note that they sticked in. So here you're gonna find your model, your engine code, your paint code, as extra as extra. You can read through it in the manual. If you don't have one, they're expensive. It's not worth having one, to be fair. Pop this back. I think we covered most of the stuff. We're gonna go for a little short drive. I'll explain a bit more about the price, mileages, what to look for, as extra as extra, and we're gonna end it. No! What, what happened to your roof? Oh, Marek Barry! Fucking hell, man. It's what Marek Barry did with his soil sauce. <laughs> doo, 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 doo. Man, that sticks! <laughs> I've been driven the car for quite a while and 
I remember when I had the MK5, I actually had quite a few MK5 so far. They had a low wind noise and this now has been adjusted in the Mark 6. It's really, really noisily noise insulated. Like you're going on a motorway with 70 and you can uh, barely hear any wind noise, which I find super nice about this vehicle. It dries very easy. So as I said in the beginning of the video, the steering now is nice and sharp and aggressive. You know where your car is at any point. And at the same time, the steering wheel turns really, really nice and smooth. The gears are going in quite nice, as you can tell. Literally, you go through a gear to a gear. Another thing that I was super impressed with this car is brakes. This car stops and it literally stops to the point where if you don't expect it and you hit the brakes a little bit harder, you're most likely going to break your face into the steering wheel. It's so sharp, literally. I barely press it now and you can feel it, how the camera goes towards the windscreen. We have a big windscreen on the front. I've mentioned it already, which is quite nice. It gives you lots of visibility. We don't have that little windows here, um, which I usually find very useless when I see them in cars. Uh, on the other hand, I think the wing mirrors are a little bit little for the car. It was gonna be nice if they were a little bit bigger but then this is something that you can really really easy get used to it as I said already indicators are showing you where you are at any given point the speedo is very clear it gives you full information uh, about your miles per gallon um, RPMs fuel is extra is extra which is a massive plus the car drives super comfortable even if you're a passenger it doesn't matter whether it's gonna be you are gonna be a front passenger or a rear passenger it's super nice you can have a nice casual chat inside of the car without any external noises a bad thing is because the car is so nicely insulated uh, but sounds sometimes you cannot hear the fixed uh, that are happening with the car so it's a little bit harder to catch it that's my opinion then you open your window slightly you roll it down <coughs> and then this is how you can feel it if something's wrong with the suspension trust me you're gonna feel the knock you might not hear it but you're gonna feel it the normal suspension drives super nice expect that if you're getting a car with bigger alleys like 18 inch and above uh, to be fair even 17 depending on what kind of tires you're gonna be driving uh, the comfort that you're gonna be getting is gonna be a lot more different and you being able to adjust your seats whatever you like it gives you the perfect driving position it's got few annoying bits and pieces as any other car torque wise as I said 1.6 diesel it doesn't feel as nippy especially if I have to compare it with the Peugeot that we shot last time this was a 1.6 as well and to be fair the difference in the torque and how the car drives are massive but on the end of the day this one is a lot more economical than the 1.6 uh, in the Peugeot engine music is accessible quite nice uh, climate control works super well unless your compressors dies I heard that this is a common issue for them but um, I haven't had any issues with that and I haven't actually had anyone that I know that's buying selling cars or dealing with cars to complain about these compressors um, another thing that they fail on is the rear bushes from the suspension when they start to fail they're a bit squeaky so when you're pressing your brake when you're reversing uh, and doing like little turns it is something that you can hear basically squeaking and it's a bit annoying but you can replace them they're very cheap it's very good for parking as I said because it's been made to steer a little bit more than the Mark V it is super easy to park the car anywhere you like you don't need parking sensors because the vision that you have everywhere from every single window it's absolutely brilliant although some trim models are coming with parking sensors or you can install once yourself if you don't feel as comfortable price wise they vary a lot again between miles service history stream levels is extra is extra bear in mind this is a vw golf it's a people's car which means it's been driven a lot so if you find one with quite a few owners do not be surprised they attempt to change their owners quite often also mileage wise you can see in between 140 150 160 k on clock this is something normal um it is slightly high mileage i would say the average is about 120 to 140 
call it even handed if you like i mean that's literally your opinion but when you open out to trader country ebay and all of them other platforms where you can actually look for cars you will find out that the most vws are 100k plus the ones that are under 100k then they're very expensive but in general you can start with your budget from 2000 pounds and it can go all the way up to 10 grand depending on what you want maybe even 15 grand but for the basic levels like two liter diesel two liter petrol you're looking to spend anything between two and five grand depending on mileage condition service and extra is extra i would recommend you if you only have two grand maybe wait a little bit more and save a little bit more before you get it if you buy it for two grand it doesn't mean it's going to be a bad car but make sure you have like a five or six hundred quid extra in your pocket just to give it a good service change the cam belt to do the oils do the brakes everything's quite cheap but give it a good service so you know you're nice and set leave a couple hundred quid to go in the garage and get your injectors uh, checked and see what their condition is what i mean is save at least 20 percent of your budget just on the car maintenance and car check once you get it because the least thing you want to do is spend three four five grand on a car that's going to break down in a couple of weeks time and then you're going to have to wait for your car to be repaired in the garage in general i think it's a pretty decent car if it's been well maintained it's been if it's been serviced as well on time so i would definitely go for one I was pretty happy with this one although I had quite a few issues so I had to change injectors I do have to change flywheel pass little bits and pieces and once this is done it's gonna be a good car for quite a long miles to go and it's probably gonna change quite a few owners before it needs the injectors and the flywheel doing again that's it for today's video I hope you managed to understand everything correct and right because of my voice if you have and if you did find that video helpful please hit the like button put a comment below subscribe and comment because that's how we help us grow and that's how you're gonna help us to release more videos more often because at the minute we're struggling thank you very much and i'll see you next time we're doing a cut in here isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like ginger? No. <laughs> I, I thought this is like the... I thought this is cabbage. <laughs> yeah. Sour cabbage. <laughs>